In this tutorial we'll talk about the main menu and context menus in WX widgets. While this is a fundamental concept in desktop UI application development and is quite simple, there are some caveats, valuable tricks and possible pitfalls to avoid. We will talk about all of that, so if you think this sounds interesting, be sure to like and subscribe and let's begin. Let's create a simple main menu. For common actions like creating a new file, opening a file or the copy cut paste commands, it's recommended to use the default menu items. These are defined in the WX widget source and have the additional benefit of automatically providing the correct keyboard shortcut, as expected by the users. Regarding the keyboard shortcuts, note that WX widgets automatically sets the correct shortcut for the platform. For example, on Mac, the shortcut becomes Command N, while on Windows and Linux, we get Control N. This also applies to user defined shortcuts. Let's create a custom menu and add an action. First, we need an ID of our custom menu item, and then it's just a matter of creating a WX menu object and adding the menu item as we did with the standard file or edit commands. We can provide a keyboard shortcut, also called accelerator, by adding a tab character and the accelerator description directly in the title string. The control descriptor is correctly mapped to the command key on Mac. This is standard behavior for desktop applications and is expected by the users. The Mac platform also has a control key. If we want to use it, we need to type raw control instead of just control. As we can see, this is correctly interpreted as a Mac control key. We also added the Alt Accelerator key and WX widgets correctly mapped it to the Option keyboard symbol. There is some inconsistency in the framework when it comes to mapping the raw control accelerator. While it maps to control on Linux, the Windows version of WX widgets leaves it as raw control, which is not very useful. The safest way to solve it is to use the raw control only for Mac by checking the platform in the code either by using defines or by checking the reported OS by using WX platform info. Note that the operating system ID is a bit field, so we need to check it against the OS mask using bitwise end. That's why we use a single ampersand here. But remember, raw control is not a substitute for the control key on Mac. The command key is. So in most cases, you don't need to do the operating system check. If you want your menu item to use a control shortcut, just leave it as control. The framework will correctly map it to the command key on Mac, just as users expect. Reserve the raw control for some rare Mac specific actions. On Windows and Linux platforms, the user is able to hit Alt and a letter key to open a menu and then hit another letter to select a menu row. To add that feature to our custom menus, we simply add ampersands before the letters we want to use as hotkeys. Let's add some more menu rows. Along with the usual text items, we can add separators, choice items, where the user can select as many options as they want, submenus that open another menu on the right, and radio items, where only one option can be selected. After preparing the IDs for our new menu items, we simply append them to our custom menu. A sub-menu is just a regular WX menu, which we append like any other item. Our submenu will contain three radio items and the user will be able to select only one of these. After running the application, we see that the menu items work precisely as described. 
our menu got some standard icons for check marks and radio button selection indicators. Now you might run into problems with these icons on Linux. If you run the app through Visual Studio Code and your icons are all messed up, please know that this is a bug in a Visual Studio Code C++ plugin. The IDE sets the GDK folder search environment variables, which confuse the GTK library. The icons look good if we run the application from the terminal or a desktop shortcut. As of now, there is really no way of solving this. The workaround proposed in the GitHub issue discussion does not seem to help, so until the bug is fixed, we have to run the Linux apps from the terminal or accept the weird icons if we wish to debug our programs from Visual Studio Code. Our menu is pretty useless without event handling. As described in my events video, there are two primary ways to implement event handling, using the event table or dynamic binding. Event tables are the old way of implementing event handling, involving macros and a lot of uppercase letters. Binding, on the other hand, requires calling the bind method and can be done at runtime in the code. Both methods require declaring the IDs for the menu items, for example through constants or enumerations. If you have a lot of menu items, you may end up with a lot of declarations. If you only need those IDs for event handling, then this is not really necessary. Let me show you a better way. We will take advantage of the fact that the append method returns the menu item added. We can get the ID of that item through the getID call, and the ID itself might be generated by specifying wxid any in the append method. This special identifier tells the framework to generate the correct ID that hasn't been used in the app. Since we have the ID, we can call bind like this and eliminate the constant. We can even do this in a single call. A similar technique can be used to set up menu items that have to be checked by default. To do this, we use menu bar check, providing the menu items ID. Let's move on and explore context menus. We construct these using a regular WX menu class and display them by calling the popup menu method. Ideally, we should do this in the handler of the special context menu event emitted by the framework. Let's see how to do this. To make this more interesting, we will implement a very simple drawing canvas. If you want to know more about creating custom controls, I recommend my video on the topic. We need mouse event handlers, the array of shapes drawn by the user, and a simple boolean indicating if the user intends to draw on the screen or move the mouse pointer. The implementation file is pretty standard. We set up the event handlers in the constructor and then in onPaint we iterate over the shapes and draw them on the screen. To accommodate for the operating system's dark or light mode, we set the pen color to either white or black so that our canvas looks good with any OS theme. The mouse event handlers are super simple. When the user clicks the left mouse button, we set the is drawing variable and create an empty vector to trace the mouse position. This data structure will represent a single shape. If the user moves the mouse while is drawing variable is true, we add the points to our vector and call refresh to trigger a paint event and draw the added points. Finally, if the mouse button is released or the pointer leaves the control area, we set the is drawing to false. We add the CPP file to CMakeLists, instantiate the control in the main frame 
and run the app. Alright, this looks pretty nice. Let's add a context menu to make it easier to perform basic actions on our canvas. For example, clearing it. Let's start with declaring a menu in our class, along with some helper methods. In the first one, we build the menu, adding the items and binding the events, just like we did for the main menu. In the context menu event handler we check the position. On some platforms, the context menu can be triggered using a keyboard key. In that case, we get the WX default position in the event object. So we show the menu in the center of our control. If we get any other position, it means the user right clicked on the canvas. We convert it to our control coordinates and then display the menu using the pop-up menu call. Now back to the constructor. First, we call the build context menu method and then bind the event handler to display the pop-up. Our menu reacts to mouse button clicks and the clear action correctly resets the canvas. There is one caveat. If we want to respond to the context menu event, we must carefully handle the right click events. If we add a handler to the right mouse click and run the program, we can see that we get a log message from the right click handler, but the menu does not appear. To fix this, we call skip, and then we can have bot handlers in our code. And that's it for this topic. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.